Welcome to Teach It Series on Fluid Seam Distance Lab number 6 in which I'm going to talk about Displacement Step Diagram. So far we covered uh, some of the basic components inside pneumatic circuits including actuators like single acting cylinder and double acting cylinder, how they function, what are the differences between the single acting cylinder and double acting cylinder. In addition, we looked at directional control valves, how we can configure directional control valves and what type of actuations do we have for basically uh, directional control valves. We also looked at twin pressure valve and um, uh, shuttle valve and we covered all these important components with a few basic pneumatic circuits. Now it's time to make a bit the circuits that we are dealing with uh, a bit basically complex because in reality in industrial application we would see pneumatic circuits in which we have multiple actuators and those multiple actuators are working in sequences so that is where basically we need to have displacement step diagram to understand what is the sequence and ensure the system is working in the right Order. Okay, so in this video, uh, I'll briefly cover the concept of displacement step diagram and how we can draw a displacement step diagram and how we can basically read a displacement step diagram and use it for drawing a pneumatic circuit inside the policy. And I'll cover all these basically important concepts with one example, and I extracted this example from a uh, Festo uh, textbook on pneumatic circuits. Okay, let's start. So what is displacement step diagram and when we need to have displacement step diagram? So let's say in the case of multiple cylinder circuit, which means we have multiple actuators, a clear definition of the problem is important. So we have to know when this basically the first actuator is going to be started when it reaches to the fully advanced position and when it starts retraction process and the same thing for the second and the third actuators if we have let's say three or four or let's say two uh, actuators within that pneumatic circuit so the representation of the desired motion of all actuator is described using the displacement step diagram. So that is the main role of a displacement step diagram. And with the use of displacement step diagram, we can find, okay, what is the starting point? Should we have a push button for starting this? Or we should have like, let's say a pedal for starting the whole process of this pneumatic circuit. So that is how displacement step diagram help us even from the like the beginning of that uh, cycle until the end and the end is basically uh, is the position in which we consider the circuit is again ready for the next cycle so if the motion diagram and all auxiliary conditions have been clearly defined so we can easily understand what's going on inside that circuit so in order for this circuit to operate, the other important thing is it is highly important to avoid overlapping signals. So by an overlapping signals, we basically have simultaneous uh, actuations for two control ports of, let's say, one directional control valve. Let's say we have a directional control valve with five ways and two positions and at the same time from left and right side we are actuating that directional control valve which is connected to a double acting cylinder so in that condition this directional control valve is going to be confused because it doesn't know what it should do it should go towards let's say if it was normally closed at the beginning should it uh, switch to norm to the open position or should it stay should it like stay in the normally closed condition because it is basically actuated simultaneously from both sides right so 
how we can avoid signal overlapping again based on the displacement step diagram we can easily understand in that specific circuit there is a signal overlapping therefore we should have some approaches in order to avoid that condition but this is not the aim of this video in the next uh, basically lab I will cover the signal overlapping and how we can avoid signal overlapping if we are dealing with that condition within a pneumatic circuit so in general if we want to eliminate that specific case we can use idle return or toggle lever valves or time delay valves reversing valves or sequences so that is going to be the scope of the next video and i will cover it in the next lab so now in order to better understand what's going on in terms of displacement step diagram let's look at the example that i extract from festo uh, book on pneumatic circuits so what we have in here we have two cylinders and these two cylinders are used to transfer parts from a magazine onto a shoe. When a push button is pressed, the first cylinder extends, pushing the part from the magazine and positions it in basically preparation for transfer. Let me bring the laser here, laser tag. So what we have, basically it positions it in preparation for transfer by the second cylinder onto the output uh, shoot. Once the part is transferred, the first cylinder retracts, followed by the second. So the problem statement is giving us some important information, which is basically clarifying uh, what we have in terms of sequence, right? So the first thing is the push button is pressed. So someone should press that push button in order to have this system operating. Once that push button is pressed, the first cylinder, as you see in here, extends, pushing this part, right, from the magazine and positions it in the preparation for transfer by second cylinder, which is this 2A, onto the output, outfit shoot, right? So, what we need to have, basically, actuating this one, right, and we should link the position of this piston inside double acting cylinder the first one with the actuation of the the second one because whenever this box is in here this should be ready right to push that one inside this outfit shoot. so we we will see how we can look at these sequences one by one and how we can use this placement step diagram in order to basically get this uh, sequence within this specific application okay here we have basically four important parts right in each of the side I'm going to look at just this one displacement step diagram first so anytime that we are dealing with a, a pneumatic circuit in which we have multiple actuators for each of the actuators that we have in the circuit in the system we should have a displacement step diagram, right? So you see here we have two diagrams basically, and each of them is pertinent to the corresponding actuators that we have within that pneumatic circuit. So the first one you see here is 1A, right? And as you remember, I said we need to start the very first actuator, right? So here you see it is saying start 1S1. So we would have a push button and we would basically start, right? Now, we started that push button, right? The system starts operating. So what will happen is basically the system is going to move from fully retracted positions, that double acting cylinder from fully retracted positions towards fully advanced positions, right? So that's why we have a positive slope for that actuator between a step one and a step two. And when it reaches to a step two, it will stay there. But what we can see is we have one S3, which is connected basically, that is a, another directional control valve, which is linked 
to the position of piston that we have inside the first double acting cylinder and with, when it reaches to the fully advanced position this one is going to be triggered right 1s3 is going to be triggered so you see we have an arrow and then we look at the second uh, double acting cylinder that we have so once 1s3 is basically actuated we have the system, the second double acting cylinder within the system, uh, moving towards fully advanced positions, right? So again, we have basically a positive slope because it is moving towards fully advanced position and it reaches to 2S2, right? And 2S2 again is another directional control valve that we have within the system, right? Now, this one is linked to basically the, the first one because we have to somehow retract it right so this directional control valve plays the role of actuating for the retraction step for the first cylinder now you see we have this arrow which means okay this one is going to trigger the the first double acting cylinder towards retraction right so it is being retracted and again anytime that you see a negative slope it means we are dealing with retraction right so it means it is moving towards uh, left side if like let's say towards uh, retraction side so now it is basically moving towards retraction side and then we get to step 4 what is happening in step 4 we have 1s2 right and it reaches to basically 1s2 and 1s2 again is another directional control valve which is linked to the piston position in the first double acting cylinder right now it is in the fully retracted position this is going to be actuated and once it is actuated it is basically uh, actuating the uh, second double acting cylinder to start moving towards retraction right so we see the same thing here right we have 1s2 and from 1s2 we have an arrow which is representing we have the retraction scenario started for the second double acting cylinder and it reaches to very first point and in which we have 2s1 actuated and you see here we have 5 equals 1 which means okay we are at the beginning of a cycle and the system is ready and the pneumatic circuit is ready to start the second cycle okay so that is how we can look at a step diagram displacement step diagram and how we basically can read uh, a displacement step diagram sometimes we have a drawing right and we have to basically write uh, the displacement diagram and the steps accordingly sometimes we have the problem statement and we should uh, be able to provide the displacement step diagram along with the pneumatic circuit so we have the displacement step diagram now and we know how we can read it now it's time to like look at the the circuit that we plan to design so this is the circuit and i already explained the whole steps that we have in here right from step one to basically reaching to step five in which again the system is ready for starting the new cycle right so you see we have here we have a directional control valve in which we have push button right and if we the operator push this switch there right this is going to be actuated and here we have a twin pressure valve and already this one is actuated so that means so basically that is the application of that linking between this double acting cylinder and this directional control valve in here the position of like the fully retracted position of 2s1 right so we have this stream pressure valve and it, it is basically confirming for us this one confirming for us the second double acting cylinder is also in fully retracted position so that helps us to avoid like changing the cycle in the middle of operating so the system cannot operate until uh, cannot start a new cycle until this one is in the actuation or in the like let's say open condition right so that's why we have this stream pressure valve in here 
So once we actuate this one, right, because it is already actuated this one, this twin pressure valve we receive two true conditions, right? Therefore, the air can pass here, and this port 14 will pneumatically actuate this directional control valve, and from there we have this double acting cylinder uh, basically advance, right? It advances towards one is three. Now we are after like a few seconds we reach to 1s3 and this 1s3 is connected to this directional control valve which has a mechanical actuation roller type right so when it reaches to there this one is going to be actuated the air will pass through this line and it gets inside here right and what we have in the next step this is going to be actuated right now we have this one actuated air pass through this line inside this double acting cylinder and it moves this piston moves towards twist and if it reaches to twist two right based on already explain it inside the displacement step diagram like here we just have a sort of visualization from the circuit so it reaches to twist two right and twist two is linked to this directional control valve this will be actuated and from there we have this port 12 pneumatically actuated this will be switched and then the air so we will have a uh, retractionist right and then it reaches to 1s2 when it is on 1s2 this one is going to be switched and from there we have this one switch to and this starts retraction and then it reaches to s1 right and the system will be ready for the new cycle so that is how we can look at a pneumatic circuit in which we have a sequence and that is how we can basically connect it with the displacement step diagram and also the problem statement. So if you are dealing with an industrial problem, you should ensure that you know all steps in there and like from like let's say fully retracted position for all actuators that you have till whatever in between needed. And let's say if you have a sort of delay because sometimes it is not needed to start the operating right after reaching for example to a specific point let's say fully advanced position so in that case we need to use for example time delay valve and i'll discuss time delay valve in our next videos so you see how we can use the time delay valve too okay so this is how we can look at displacement step diagram and its connection with uh, the sequences and the systems in which we have multiple actuator. So I already explained how this system works basically and again this is going to be the replications I'm not going to cover it again. Let's look at uh, basically here the video that I prepared based on the circuit that we saw and then I'll design the circuit in the next part of uh, this uh, lab. So let me start the video. You see when we are actuating here, right, the sequence is started and then let's again look. So the sequence to start, this twin pressure valve passed there this one will be switched, this one will move towards 1s3 and then that sequence starts until reaching to like a step uh, 5, okay? So that is uh, like a short video but in the next part I'll show you how we can link all of these components and how we can make this circuit based on a given problem. Thank you very much for watching this part of the video, stay tuned for the software part. Okay, we discussed what is a displacement step diagram and this is basically our first example as I said. And based on the example and the problem statement and the displacement step diagram given, I'm going to design the circuit inside the fluid seam and I'll show you all the steps for designing this circuit in which we have multiple actuators. So without further ado, let's start making this circuit. So what we need for this circuit, we need to have two actuators, both of them are double acting cylinder, 
right? What else we need? We have to have supply elements. So I'm bringing supply elements and then uh, air service units, right? Manifold. And we need basically we need two of them because we would have multiple uh, components in here, multiple directional control valves, and the air should be distributed between all of them. So I'm going to bring another one, uh, another uh, manifold air service unit and compressed air supply now we have everything from this side in terms of air supplying right so the next step is bringing the uh, directional control valves we need five directional control valves with five port and two positions and two directional control valves with uh sorry we need five directional control valves with three ways and two positions and we need two directional control valves with five ways or five ports and two positions so i'll bring all of them one by one and then we can configure the form of actuations for each of them so the directional control valves the configurable one so we need three of them here two of them the other for the other actuators right so these are the three needed here and this one is going to be added for this side and we need two of them right and the other thing is basically five-way directional control valve and this is the the other one needed to be added so let me remove this connection and start working on the system and linking one by one okay we need to basically connect all of them right i'm going to start from air service unit and air supply and then connecting it to a manifold and the same thing for this one so this is going to be connected to the air service unit and then we connect it to manifold the other part is basically configuring each of these directional control valves the first one that we have which is called 1s1 right 1s1 and for that one I'm going to use manual actuations and based on the problem it is going to be a push button a spring return head okay right so this one is ready the second one is going to be called 2s1 as you might remember it was connected to the second actuator right so this is basically representing uh, the second the basically the linking with the second actuators and one because we have two actuators in here we can say the one that i'm putting in here means the retraction uh, as the, or retraction status for that specific circuit based on the given statement inside the problem so we have 2s1 and hit ok okay i forgot to configure it inside configure valve we do mechanical actuation Rotor valve spring return right that is all for this one and the same thing happening is here and this one is going to be called 2s2 which means when the double act the second double acting cylinder is in fully advanced position or let's say in the in its second position this one is going to be actuated and if we configure it it's going to be mechanical actuation spring return head okay uh, so this is all done we can also add the identification side if we want to link it right so that is 2s1 right Head okay and this one is one uh, 2s2 right and head okay so this one we have to basically configure this one too uh, for doing that we just need again double click on it go to configure valve and then we need to have pneumatic actuation this side and pneumatic actuation the other side so both sides are going to have pneumatic actuation this is going to be connected here right and this is going to be now I forgot to bring the trim pressure valve so as you know trim pressure valves are located inside flow control and here right so then connect here this is going to be connected to the first port and again the same thing with the other input ports right so 
now we have all connections for these directional control valves we can connect here to the double acting cylinder right and we need to basically connect this one too going to connect it here and this one connected to the manifold here the same thing right and this one is also going to be connected and then we have to put the terminator as expected so this is going to be the terminator hit ok and I'm going to put a terminator here and then again hit ok and this one is going to be connected here too right and we can hit OK and we can go to the terminator and then hit OK right so this is all connected we just need to put the label for the stream pressure valve so I'm going to call it 1v1 right and this is going to be called 1v2 because this is in connection with the first a double acting cylinder and then we need to have a terminator here right and the same thing for this one another terminator and hit ok now we have uh, everything set in terms of linking and exhaust the next step is putting the labels for this one and also configuring it in terms of maximum strong right so hit ok right so heading 1a and i'm going to basically put a 10 inch put 10 inch here head okay okay so this is 1a everything in this side is ready in terms of linking but we have then we have to put the labels and link them to uh directional control valves for the other double acting cylinder that we have now let's look at this one focus on the directional control valves that we have in here so uh, again this is going to be mechanical form right and we are going to have a spring return and this is going to be called 1s3 which means when the circuit when the first double acting cylinder reaches to fully advanced position this should be actuated right so add ok and we can also add the identification too so 1s3 right and heading k okay. And the same thing for this one but this one is going to be called 1s2 which means when it is in the fully retracted position the first double acting cylinder this one is going to be actuated right and for configuration i'm going to choose again mechanical form and a spring returns and finally okay uh, and also we need to connect it to the manifold and the same thing for this one right and adding the exhaust or terminator so the terminator connected here and the terminator connected here and then we click this one uh, and link it to basically the main directional control valve that we have for the second uh, double acting cylinder and this is going to be in the form of pneumatic actuation we have to go to pneumatic actuation both sides pneumatic fully actuated and heading ok and I'm going to connect this here and I'm going to connect this one here right now we have all linking between these three directional control valves the only thing left is the exhaust here so heading ok and the same thing for this one and then we can basically link it right and here is the last step in terms of connecting the ports this is going to be called 2e1 and for this one i'm going to use 1 2a sorry so this is going to be called 2a now we have 1a 2a we have everything connected now it's time to basically link the directional control valves to the position of piston that we have inside 1a and inside 2a 
So what, for 1a, we have to link 1s3 and 1s2. The first thing is 1s2 because it is showing the fully retracted position. So we need to go to actuating labels and putting 0 as the starting and ending because when the piston reaches that fully retracted position in that specific moment direction directional control valve 1s2 will be actuated and then 1s3 right putting 10 inches and this is going to be actuated when it reaches fully advanced position right and heading okay now we have all connections for this one it's time to look at 2a 2a at the beginning like again actuating labels it is going to be 2 s1 starting at 0 starting at 0 and then 2s2 right and then again ending at 10 inches right and heading okay. now everything is set in the circuit whenever the if you see like this shape in here right it means in that condition in that uh, moment it is linked to a, a, a position of a piston somewhere right so you see like this line and then it's like a ground right so that is how we can understand okay that linking is covered and that linking is basically correct if we are looking at the problem statement now we have everything set it's time to basically start the simulation so the expectation is when i push this button right the, the sequence should start and this one is two should reach is one is three and from there this one is three should be actuated and then this should move towards two s two and then we have this two s two actuated and this will return towards uh one is two right and one is two will actuate this one and from there we will have it uh, basically towards retraction process reaches to 2s1 and then this is going to be actuated and again we are ready for another sequence let's do that you see we basically have the full sequence and all the steps that we already discussed sometimes it is possible because of a bad design because of not caring that much about the displacement step diagram uh we face signal overlapping which means this the circuit is not operating because there is a confusing part and we have let's say a directional control valve which is actuated some simultaneously from both sides so this is the case i will cover in the next video and uh, basically how we can fix the issue of signal overlapping within a pneumatic circuit Thank you very much for watching this video hope you enjoyed and learned a bit about displacement step diagram if you learn and enjoy it please subscribe our channel